how God has kept me alive so far because he is, I have not yet completed what God wanted me to do. And when I die, I will have completed what God wanted me to do. And there are those who believe that God has not ever let anyone die until whatever God set for him to do as a commission has been fulfilled. Well, I guess that is true, that it has never happened in any case that we read of in the Bible. And uh, I don't believe that God is through with me yet. But if I die, you'll know that he was. And that, that'll mean that the work has been finished. Friends and brethren around the world, this message is directed to those who were genuinely called into the Church of God by the Father when it was named Radio Church of God or later the Worldwide Church of God. Those who repented and were baptized received the Holy Spirit through the laying on of hands in that church. It is they who accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They believed that Jesus raised up a great and impossible to repeat worldwide work through his human instrument, Herbert W. Armstrong. If you joined one of the scattered groups who claim to be a church of God or a ministry that was associated with the Worldwide Church of God, and you do not understand, nor do you accept that Christ had only one apostle, and that that apostle promoted the government of God in that one true church, and that that apostle did the work in the 20th century as the Philadelphia era, if you don't believe these things, you have been deceived into believing and accepting a false religion. Mr. Armstrong said the following. Listen to this audio clip. In Acts, the third chapter, verses 19, 20, and 21, the heavens have received Jesus until the time of restitution of all things. And then he's coming back again. Restitution means restoring to a former state or condition or restoring what had been taken away. He's coming to restore the kingdom of God. There was an Elijah to come and to restore things in the church. That has happened. And what has been restored is the government of God. And many of the truths, at least 17 or 18 principal, vital doctrines of truth, have been added to about the three that had survived in the Sardis era of the church that they still had. If you do not believe and live by the 18 truths revealed to Mr. Armstrong by Christ, then you are not serving the living God and Christ is not the head of your church or your ministry, or your Bible study, or the group you were involved with in Facebook, nor the internet group where you discuss things. Christ is not the head of it. Now, on January the 16th, 1986, Herbert W. Armstrong, or I should say, an apostle of Jesus Christ, died. Yes, an apostle died, brethren. And within the next year, evidence of doctrinal changes began to leak out from the headquarters in Pasadena. You know, it took a while, but we began to learn that those changes were what some of the evangelists, some pastors, and other ministers were actually working on secretly while Mr. Armstrong was still alive. In other words, behind his back. They were watering down doctrines, of course, including organizing the college to become accredited. They wanted it to become a worldly university. Their agenda was to produce doctrines that were bordering on the same doctrines as Protestants. 
Many of these men are in the scattered, splintered groups today. And these men, when they were called into the worldwide church of God, were called into the truth and they accepted it as such. They preached and taught that truth. But today they preach and teach a different religion. Now notice this list. Notice this list, brethren. We showed it once before. But look at this list. Hundreds of them. You know, God said to Moses, and uh, he probably we could say the same to Mr. Herbert Armstrong. He said to Moses, you would die. Deuteronomy 31 verses 16 onward. Now let us read what happened to Moses. And the Eternal said unto Moses, Behold, you shall sleep with your fathers, and this people Israel will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whether they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. And I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them. So that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? Notice verse 18. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have wrought in that day when they turned unto other gods. My dear brethren, what a frightening scenario that is. Can you imagine God hiding from you? No contact whatsoever? No contact whatsoever? Brethren, we are talking to spiritual Israel today. God is in His prophets speaking to spiritual Israel. And those scriptures in Deuteronomy apply to the churches of God today. Now notice what God said to the prophet Ezekiel about hiding. Ezekiel chapter 8 starting in verse 6. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, do you see what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel commits here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn you again, and you shall see greater abominations. Yes, my dear brethren, God looks inside of the spiritual temple, and He sees what's happening. He sees greater abominations that are occurring. Ezekiel 8 is about the priests who were supposed to minister to God in the temple. Rather, they turned their backs toward Him and worshipped a false god and promoted a false religion, just like the ministry are doing today. Let me read from Ezekiel chapter 8. Let me read from Ezekiel chapter 8, beginning in verse 11. Verse 11. And there stood before them, before the people, before the house, in the temple, in the court of the priests, seventy men of the ancients, the elders, those who are leaders of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. To where, brethren? Never went to God, because God was far from his sanctuary. We just heard that. We heard him say that I should go far off from my sanctuary in verse 6. Well, notice verse 12. And he said unto me, Son of man, that is God saying to Israel, e Ezekiel, he said unto me, Son of man, have you seen what the ancients or the leaders or those that are elders of the house of Israel do in the dark, in their recesses of their mind, planning and scheming? Every man in the chambers of his imaginary? For they say, the Eternal doesn't see us. The Lord has forsaken us. He said also unto me, Turn you again, and you shall see greater abominations that, I, that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat woman weeping for Tammuz. Yes, longing for the world, wanting to be worldly. 
Verse 15, Then said he unto me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn you again, and you shall see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men, with their backs towards the temple of the Eternal, and their faces towards the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Then he said unto me, Son of man, have you seen this? Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah, to the spiritual Jews, that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the churches of God, the land with violence, and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to the nose. Yes, they stick their nose up at God. They stick their nose up. Brethren, we must remember there is duality. These scriptures are talking to you and to me. They are talking to us, brethren. They are talking to the ministry who turn their backs on the prophecies that apply to the church and to all of us personally. You know, Jesus talking to the scribes and the Pharisees said in Matthew 23, Matthew 23, verse 29, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, and you garnish the sepulchres of the righteous, and say, if we had been in the days of our father, we would have not been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore you be witnesses unto yourselves, that you are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill you up then the measure of your fathers. Verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them you shall scourge in your churches and persecute them from city to city. Yes, my dear brethren, this is happening in the 21st century. Go read the scriptures and apply it to your church. Apply it to the groups that you are involved in. It's happening in the 21st century by those who claim the name Church of God. They garnish Herbert Armstrong's memory. They paint flowering verbal pictures of him. They try to present him in a way that will keep those people that understand Mr. Armstrong's position in their churches. They have photographs of him and Mrs. Loma Armstrong on walls in their boardrooms and in their offices. And they water down the truth and hate the government of God that Jesus Christ revealed through him. And these ministers go about killing the prophets. Yes, they kill the prophets. And how do they do that? They kill them, brethren, in the time, you know, in the time that Christ was talking about, those uh, Pharisees literally kill the messengers. Today, these men kill their messengers to spiritual Israel. Yes, they kill the messengers that God has for spiritual Israel. But the time's coming when they will literally kill the messenger, because they hate the message. Now what about the ministries and the Bible studies and all that are conducted in the name of God? What about deacons who pose as ministers twisting scripture to uphold their position? And what, yet what they're doing shows they have no clue, no idea how Christ's government operates and works. Nor do they respect it. The same goes for people, men who have gone on the internet and have web pages to teach, and those who have Facebook pages and think, because they have all Mr. Armstrong's literature there, they are commissioned by Christ to teach. How dumb can you be? How deceived are you? Ask yourself. And be honest, is Christ really among all this confusion? Does His voice resonate from a novice working on Facebook pages? whose baptism is suspect, a deacon who doesn't even hear the voice of Christ, does it emanate from men who claim to be apostles, claim to be that prophet, or the Elijah, or from, from one who claims Christ will appear in his flesh, and he teaches that to his church? 
You know, Paul writing to the Galatians said in Galatians 1 verses 6, Marvel that you, I marvel that you are so soon removed from Him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven, Paul says, Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. Let him be excommunicated from the church. Verse 9. As we have said before, so I say again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you have received, let him be accursed. Brethren, that's a double curse. Ask yourself, what gospel do you receive when you were a member of the ministry or a minister in the worldwide church of God? What gospel did you preach? What gospel did you receive? Do you faithfully obey that same gospel? That is verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught by it. But I but received it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ revealed the true gospel to Herbert Armstrong. And for 52 years he faithfully preached it. And all you men and members who led various, lead various groups and all you sitting in those groups, all you understand that it came out of the Worldwide Church of God was the truth. And you know that. But all of you have become libertarians. And you know that Jesus Christ calls a libertarian a Laodicean, which is a freewheeler. A freewheeler, one that wants to do things himself. Yes, that's what you are, my dear friends. And you need to repent and change and come back to the faith that was once delivered. Take a look at the United Church of God and International Association and its offshoot that rebelled against uh, United's leadership, the Church of God, a worldwide association, or COGWA. These groups are bordering on Protestantism. They have rejected Christ as head of His church. They decide who will lead their group. They vote. They vote them in. And they try to be politically correct by labeling it, casting a ballot. They decide through doctrinal committees what to believe as truth. You know, looking at just these two organizations, we can see they have a different religion to that which they originally believed, you know, in the Worldwide Church of God. And many of them taught that truth while in the Worldwide Church of God. You know, Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And what was or is that simplicity? Verse 4. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which you have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. These groups are teaching false and dis disreputable doctrines. And the same goes for all of the 350 groups that you've seen on the screen. The Worldwide Church of God preached a totally different truth to what has been preached in the different churches of God today. You know, and Paul warned us in Galatians, warned that we are preaching a different gospel. And these leaders and ministers and pseudo-ministers are troubling the spiritual organism which is the church of God today. And they're sitting there among these groups. My dear brethren, it's time to get back to the faith that was once delivered. 
it's time to get back to the truth, to that truth that Jesus Christ restored to His church through one apostle, one faithful leader, one man who understood the truth. But these people, these ministers and these leaders in these various groups have rejected Mr. Armstrong. They call his leadership an evil one-man leadership. And they don't want that over them. They don't want Christ over them. So brethren, I need to ask you a question. I need to ask you. Are you, are you responding to Christ's voice? Are you? Do you hear the knock that Jesus Christ is sending out today? Can you hear that knock? Can you hear Jesus Christ knocking on your spiritual door? Can you hear that? Can you, my dear brethren? That I need to ask you faithfully. Can you ask? Uh, can you hear that voice? That gospel that Jesus Christ preached to Mr. Armstrong was about the government of God in the church. The government of God being restored to the church and a government that's going to be restored to the whole world in the very near future that you're going to have to accept and come under if you want to be in God's church. You know, Herbert Armstrong preached that, brethren. And you know, Christ's physical warning to those who are in the spiritual organism of the Church of God are being warned today by this little work to return to that faith and to come together in unity to prepare the bride for Christ's return. Do you hear Christ knocking, brethren? I may ask again. Will you respond to his voice. So until next time, this is Michael Venish for the work of Jesus Christ saying goodbye brethren and goodbye friends.